Hey everybody, uh, it's Jaff from MTG with MTG Joe tonight. We're going to be doing a set review on Strixhaven. So thank you, Joe, for uh, hopping on to on tonight uh, for this. No problem. Thanks for having me. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm MTG Joe. Uh, you'll often find me hanging around in Jaffa's chat, bullying him into playing Blue Light Control. Uh, I'm a fellow streamer. I uh, produce a lot of YouTube content. And uh, frequently will find me in High Mythic trying to throw clues onto various creatures. Start off with the review. Yeah, so first card up is Belderos Witherbloom. It's a seven mana Golgari Dragon for a four four flyer. Uh, this creature uh, creates a pest token, so it's one of the themes of the set. Pests are one one creatures that when they die, you gain a life. So on each player's upkeep, it will create a pest. And then uh, the second part of its ability, I don't think is that meaningful, at least in the current format. Uh, pay 10 life, untap all the lands you control, activate this ability only once. Uh, if you do have a lot of life, it'll allow you to play a couple cards a turn, or like a couple cards each turn extra, but I think it's really the token generation. What are your thoughts, Jaffer? I don't think it's going to be a good card in Constructed, really, to be uh, it's, it's a cool looking dragon, like it's Skulgari. Um, but I don't think it's gonna be that great in like standard or historic. Maybe in like if you're playing a play queue, just having fun with stuff. Uh, but like I can see the card being more impactful in commander um, for any commander players out there. Uh, like paying 10 life to untap all your lands in a 40 life format. Okay, I'll, I'll be happy to do that. Um, next card though, uh, and life shadow. Uh, that's a lot of mana for a Death Shadow deck, though. That's seven mana. With uh, Shadow, Shadow's probably winning by the time you get to seven mana. Yeah. Uh, the next card, uh, Blex of Vexing Pests, or Search for Blex. Uh, it's two and a green for the first side, or two black black for the second side. Legendary Pest. Other pests, insects, snakes, and spiders you control get plus one, plus one. And when Blex Vexing Pest dies, you gain full life. That's, that's a, a name. Uh, and then search for blacks. Um, look at the top five cards of your library. You may put any number of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. You lose three life for each card put into your hand this way. Um, what do you think? Right now with Bone Crusher, I don't think the front half is that useful. Um, I think it really depends on what support pests get. I don't think any of the other creature types are really um meaningful at this point the backside is interesting though uh, if you do have a way to gain a lot of life uh, maybe like a black white shell where you're really just playing it for the backside for a card advantage could be good something like clerics maybe yeah uh and there was a comment of like nice sylvan library oh well uh so like the second half of just like the top five cards and then you number them to your hand that i could see being relevant if the format wasn't like the standard format and historic format wasn't so fast i guess it does seem a little that seems a little slow like uh for the format of, like just losing three life for each card um again it it's it kind of like screams edh to me yeah but think of something maybe even like historic if you go black white angels instead of abzan or, or uh selesnia you lose the collected company but you're frequently over like 40, 50 life sometimes. Being able to draw five for four mana in that deck is quite meaningful. True. You usually run out of gas. Yeah, so like in that kind of deck, if the uh, Bant Angels or Selesny Angels transitions over to that, I can see that. Or maybe it could be Abzan, just so you can keep Coco. Yeah. Uh, so then. Pest next. And insect Tribal. Be cool. Uh, so yeah. up next, Blot Out the Sky. So this one's an interesting one. Uh, black, white, X. Uh, you create X tapped one, a two, one, white, black, inkling token with flying. Uh, if X is six or more, destroy all non-creature, non-land permanents. Sorcery speed. I think it's a big thing here. Yeah, like, it's a cool art. Like I like the art a lot. Um, I think this card probably be standard playable card for like esper control becomes a thing or even just using it for to make the tokens um probably at like x for five x is five um 
See, I think the big thing too is like the non-creature component. If it did serve as like a one-side planar cleansing, this card would be probably a four of in most control decks. Just blow up your board, have my win condition all in one. Um, might still see play. Um, even like an Abzan ramp deck, uh, it's pretty easy to get up on mana. And then you can just flood the board. The, the evasion is nice on the tokens. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next one, Body of Research. It's a very color intensive <laughs> spell. Uh, great, and zero zero green and blue fractal creature token. I like the creature type. Uh, put X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is the number of cards in your library. Claim the firstborn says thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I think this card is. This is really pushing the how big of a creature can we make that's just a vanilla body. Um, there is fling, the sorcery speed. Um, I, I think like Titan's Smash had a couple uh, Genesis Ultimatum decks that he brewed up. We're using this with Terra the Peaks as kind of a mega combo. Just kill him in one shot, similar to Beanstalk Giant in the past. A little less utility, can't be hit off the Genesis Ultimatum itself. That sounds like a Titan but, uh, thing. <laughs> if you're flinging a, you know, throw Ember Cleave on it, you're good. <laughs> um, even like in Historic, just using the one mana Thud. Um, it's, the, it's Sorcerer Speed, but it's another way to just like win the game. Um, I the, Again, I like the art on, on this one too. Um, a lot of these cards have really cool art in this set. Yeah. The art's like A plus in this set. All right, Crackle with Power, aka likely never going to see any constructive play, but uh, two red XXX, um, adult content involved. Crackle with Power deals five damage times X to each of up to X targets. Um, we're really not going to be able to generate that much mana, um, it being sorcery speed, so even if Wilderness Reclamation was still a thing, but... I, I don't think uh, it's that meaningful. Yeah, I like this card kind of just another commander card to me. Um, unless if there's ways to cheat that much mana, um, which I guess if you have some weird, uh, uh, what's the artifact in historic? Um, paradox engine? Yes, paradox engine. If you have some weird paradox engine deck, I guess. If but... you're doing engine stuff though, like there's Banefire. Uncounterable, yes. easier True. to cast. Yeah, that's that is a lot easier to cast. Um, it, it's cool that has uh, is that Rowan on it or yeah, that's Rowan, I believe. Yeah, we'll get to those walkers in a bit. Um, the next one, ecological apparish appar appreciation. <laughs> oh my gosh, um, X two green. <laughs> uh, search your library for up to uh library and graveyard for up to four creature cards with different mana value wait different names and have mana value x or less and then reveal them an opponent chooses two of those cards shuffle the chosen cards into your library and put the rest into the battlefield exile ecological appreciation so it's like a gifts ungiven kind of pile choice i think this card is ultimately dependent on it can you get a combo out of some sort. I don't think doing like the value play is really that effective. If you could do something like Saltai Ultimatum, um, you can get multicolor or Saltai Ultimatum. Uh, you could only get monocolor. Uh, this is one of those cards that I think the, the combo is really going to be dependent. I agree. Um, and like maybe like the what comes to my mind for like if somebody were to try this and constructed would be historic mono green walkers with a uh, ley line on the field and all the dorks and nissa um and then just getting like a big bomb of a creature onto the field that's that's the only thing i could think of if you would see it play see play in an arena um uh, it could be something if you eventually get like a malira style combo like the old pod combos for back in the day but yeah just duplicate effects that would all yield like whatever you choose you're dead kind of thing 
And I actually didn't get to play during that time. Um, I heard like Pod was pretty powerful. Uh, well, it was for the two weeks I, I bought the deck and then it got banned. So that was fun. <laughs> oh, did you hate that? Just like I spent all this money on this deck and then all of a sudden banned. I went from Pod to Is It Delver when Treasure Cruise got played. So I had back to back deck skip banned in modern oh. and then i quit modern <laughs> um when pioneer first became a thing i had the experience of uh i built golgari field of the dead and then literally the next day <laughs> after i built it i actually built another deck as well a modern deck uh mono red phoenix literally the next day on that following monday field of the dead got banned and pioneer and faith of Sudan got banned in modern yeah. so yeah. That's alright, we'll give you one Mythic Rare Wild card. Try again. <laughs> alright, so uh, moving on, uh, the next one has pretty cool art too. Yeah, the next one's a sweet one. Um, so this is a dual-faced legendary creature, uh, 4 mana, pretty restrictive on the Orzhov. A 4 mana, 2-4 double strike. Magecraft. So Magecraft, uh, this is the first instance of uh, this new ability. So whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery, you get an additional ability. So in this case here, you get to return target non-legendary creature from your graveyard to your hand. Um, the part of the card that is the most interesting to me is the flip side. That wall of text, uh, eight mana seems like a lot, um, but you get a cost reduction for of two for each creature you sacrifice. Um, and then each opponent sacrifices a creature, uh, they, and then you create a... Uh, three six black and red creature token with haste and whenever this creature attacks it deals three damage each opponent um does it get copied or is it just so it's only one instance of them sacking it's an interesting card it is i i can kind of see the second half the, the rakdos half seen play maybe in a a new Rakdos deck or just like as a one or two of in the current Rakdos deck. Um, but I don't think it'll be super impactful. I think people will try it out just to see how it goes. Um, yeah, even the front half, like the Magecraft part of be having to play instants and sorceries in a deck that's probably pretty high on creatures. Um, for it to take advantage of the return to your hand clause seems kind of at odds with each other. Mm -hmm. Let me show you. I'm going to jam it during early access. We're just going to sack the board and see what we can get. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, somebody in chat's mentioning about uh, for um, EDH that, yeah. Like a lot of these cards in the set seem like it can't there are a lot of EDH cards in the set. Um just the theme of it overall just seems pretty cool too. Um yeah. but the next one, I do like how this next one, the uh alt art is just um the extended art is the alt art instead. Um it looks more traditional the art on the second one. But uh get Gazala Gal Galazeth Galazeth Prismari <laughs> two blue red Obviously. three four <laughs> flying it's an elder dragon I do like how we get elder dragons in this set um and when it enters you create a treasure token and artifacts you control have tap add one man of any color spend this mana only to cast instead of sorcery spells this gold span dragon we is it dragons now um throw in some green you could ramp up throw in some black you have disruption um i think the notable thing too uh the artifacts you control have tap to add mana um your treasure tokens if you don't want to crack it that turn it still produces two mana i believe off goldspan dragon uh in historic there's a lot of powerful artifacts um even something like a graph digger's cage you lock your opponent out, but now you also can tap it for mana. In a Paradox Engine deck, your uh, you color fix as well with this. With Kinnon out, it doubles the mana. So a lot of cool connotations here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I I'm excited to see if uh, that does become a turn into a an archetype, or even like if the is it uh, tempo deck 
uh come comes in becomes back and this is just thrown right into it um, I, I got it i got it here's your curve galaseth goldspan dragon throw on an ember cleave your ember cleave taps for mana now <laughs> <laughs> I got Ember Cleave on this creature that's attacking now, but I'm going to tap it and then uh, use it to shock you. Your Ember Cleave now <laughs> taps for mana to equip, to, so now you reduce the equip cost. Boom. Ember Cleave, best card ever printed. Oh, uh, don't tell Titan about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next one, I mean, I really like how it looks. Oh, it's a Seb McKinnon, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> anything anything he, he paints is amazing. Um, the card itself, I have no clue what the hell you're going to do with it. Um, every color possible of green and black mana, plus one, just in case. Exchange your hand in Graveyard. Exile, Harness, Infinity. Um, why it doesn't give you uh, maximum or no maximum hand size? Don't know. The instant speed's interesting, as pointed out in chat. Yeah, it definitely is pretty interesting that it's instant speed. Uh, I was having a discussion with some of my uh, IRL friends that are huge commander players, and it, it's basically Praetor's Council. Um, Praetor's Council is a EDH only uh, specific card, um, I, I believe so. Um, yeah, eight mana, exile your graveyard. I think put it in your hand. You have no maximum hand size. Yeah. Um, so like, except for. The, yeah, this is just missing no maximum hand size on this. Um, but yeah, wait, it's a Sam McKinnon art. Who's not going to like it? <laughs> I'm excited to see if it does anything in Constructed. I do think that is way too much mana, though, to do anything. Yeah. Like, it, it is super like color intensive. But may, maybe the new lands we're getting will help out. Um... Yeah, instant speed could matter with it too. Um, so the next card, though, it we got a legendary dwarf, uh, a dwarf cleric. Uh, it's a three red white Hoffrey Ghost Forge. Hope I said pronounce that right, or is it Ofri? But um, spirits to control get plus one plus one have trample and haste, and then a lot of text. Um, <laughs> So whenever a non-token creature you control dies, exile, if you do, create a token that's a copy of the creature, except if it's a spirit, in addition to its other types. And then it has, when this creature leaves the battlefield, return the exiled card to your graveyard. Four or five. I think this card is a pretty good top end. Like, it probably will see some play. Maybe, like, once I'll drain. But if you... It, you basically recycle all your creatures once they die. They come back with haste and then they still remain in your graveyard boros is having a graveyard theme in this set uh kind of self mill reanimation which is a really interesting take on the boros archetype mm -hmm. it's no longer just throw on equipments and say go um four or five also decently statted it's not gonna incidentally get killed by the common removal uh five toughness seems to be the sweet sweet spot in a lot of these decks where burn base damage gets around it mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really have much of an opinion on this card yet. Um, I think I just need to see it, see play. Uh, it does sound like it, it's kind of cool. Um, kind of interesting to see a dwarf cleric. I, I don't recall seeing dwarf cleric before. Jane called up five mana for your board wipe protection is expensive. Um, I think maybe like as a one or two of in the top end. Um, you are competing with Scalds. Yeah, especially with that being legendary too. Winota. Um, this doesn't really play well with Winota. Yeah. If it was a human, then yeah. And like, you know, there's not many spirits in the format right now. It goes in your dwarf tribal deck with Magda. <laughs> then you just get treasures. And then you pl and then you just splash blue to play the uh uh Galazeth. No, uh, yeah. And then you get your Ember Cleave that taps for mana. Boom. Formats <laughs> off. All right. So talking about really exp Every Mythic in this set seems like it costs like 15 mana. Maybe they're trying to make Mythics more balanced again. Could be. <laughs> um, so Jadzi, Oracle of Arcavios. Uh, I will s destroy all these names at least once. 
eight mana five five legendary creature discard a card return it to your hand uh magecraft whenever you cast an instant or sorcery if you, or if you copy it you reveal top card of your library if it's a non-land you can cast it for one mana rather than its mana cost if it's a land put into the battlefield um really powerful effect uh very highly costed the backside is journey to the oracle uh, I believe this is a four mana card that the visual for the full art shows it as three mana. Uh, they messed up the graphics on yep. that. So yep. four mana. Uh, basically dump all the lands from your hand into the battlefield. If the, you control eight or more lands, uh, you may discard a card. Uh, if you do, then you return it to your owner's hand. So basically dump all the lands. I really think if it's going to get played, it's going to be the front side in like a Saltai Ultimatum deck, perhaps as a target, or like a big group. Like Simic seems to be focused on ramping again. Uh, this could be a top end that you then get to like use it to cast free spells, or like every spell costs one. Yeah, um, I I think that this card, like I agree with you, uh, the first half looks pretty good. Um, just it's a five five it is a lot of mana for the creature uh but um the ability on it seems pretty good uh the second half though the four mana half um it does interest me of like maybe um it, it kind of interests me more of like modern comes to mind i know like we we both pit play pretty much standard and historic only but modern comes to mind with uh primeval titan uh and field of the dead so like kind of ramping and then just like put dump all the lands in my hand onto the field i don't i'm not then you're not going to care about getting it back in your hand because your hands probably gonna be empty at that point um but also i haven't played modern in like a while so i don't know how well that would go in primeval titan decks um yeah and yeah, the journey perfect. to the oracle is two green green the full yeah. art side of it uh for some reason the preview preview uh what that reason has the ron uh mana just cost, uh pay, mana pay for the full art pay to win going forward all full arts now have a reduced mana cost for casting <laughs> no more um, pringles for thing, us we just need we need full arts <laughs> yeah one thing maybe in historic in a nisa deck just doubling your mana um, for the front half, you can easily curve Nisa into this with five to six lions and then still have mana open to cast another spell to potentially copy. Yeah. Yeah, Excel's uh, pointing out like in an ultimatum pile doesn't really do much on its own. Um, probably doesn't let you combo. You're probably better off with the new Liliana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um... One thing came to mind also when you mentioned historic, maybe a teamer deck or uh, a late game expansion explosion or explosion with all the ramp. Um, yeah, the only thing is you don't get the magecraft ability to cast for one. You yeah. want cards that aren't X. Because um, really what you want to do is reduce the cost, I think. Yeah. Like when it comes to blue, like I don't have... A reclamation deck kappa uh when it comes to blue i don't really have too much of an opinion on blue cards since i don't play blue much um except for i've been playing some salt eye now um that, that that's moist golgari it, it's saw gary okay <laughs> <laughs> uh the next card uh it's a three mana planeswalker uh kazmina's coming back kazmina enigma sage um each other planeswalker you control has the loyalty ability of Kazmina Enigma the Sage. Um, starts at two loyalty, plus two you scry one, minus one you create a zero zero green and blue fractal. Fractal words are hard. Fractal to uh, creature token. Put X one one counters on it. Uh, minus eight. Uh, search your library for an instant or sorcery card that shares a color with the planeswalker exiled. Wait, with this planeswalker walker exile that card then shuffle you may cast that card without paying its mana cost hmm. yeah as exile pointed out i think the biggest thing in historic is this plus three mana in our set just being able to plus and then recycle that ability where with a lot of the war of the spark planeswalkers that just had down tick abilities 
mm -hmm. uh, they now get plus abilities. And then notably with the ultimate, if you're able to get up to it, uh, it fetches Genesis Ultimatum, Emergent Ultimatum, Jeskai Ultimatum, you get to cast those for free. Yeah, like... Yeah, and I know like a lot of people were kind of uh, down. Uh, they were kind of putting this card down like they uh, when I saw on Twitter, they weren't thinking too highly of it. Um, I feel like a lot of cards, a lot of the time when we see cards kind of like this or um, that uh, people don't really think of, later on we see it it's gonna do something later on. Like later on, we do see it do something in the in a format or like our hot second. So I think this card potentially could do something. You know, a lot of people I saw weren't thinking too much of it. Look, the last time they printed a three mana Simic Planeswalker that people thought wasn't very good, uh, it ruined every Magic format in Oko. Now this is nowhere near the power of Oko, but yeah, it's I probably more of a synergy based card. You obviously need some Planeswalkers and then some top end for the ultimate, but it's mm -hmm. something to try out, I think. I think all three mana Planeswalkers need to be considered to some extent. Mm -hmm. I do like how in the, the alt art, uh, the owl, her owl is just, one of them is just resting on the, her staff. Oh yeah, A plus with all the art. Yes. Now, speaking of big giant dumb spells, Magma Opus, eight mana. Uh, Megma Opus steals four damage as you want to divide it. Tap up to two target permanents. Create a four-four blue-red elemental token and draw two cards. A lot of things, a lot of mana. Um, it is instant speed. Uh, you can also have the option to discard it for two mana to create a treasure token, so it somewhat ramps you. Um, it is a lot of mana. There is a couple ways to cast things in this. Uh, set from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. There's the four mana red creature that we will take a look at. Um, I think if you are throwing things in the graveyard, it's pretty good. And maybe a, is it dragons list like with gold span? It helps you ramp up to those bigger dragons um, with the treasure token. We're seeing that theme. Um, pretty much it what i think i know this is probably the last card you're gonna play jaffer a yeah. blue and red card yeah i don't really have much of an opinion on this except for i think the art has an elephant in the middle of it i see an angel <laughs> it looks like an elephant to me like right here you see like tusks and then I the see ears arms. they look like tusks to me then the ears kind of, kind of look like they do look like wings to me but like is it dumbo it's the ghost of Dumbo. <laughs> uh, so the next one, uh, set, it's a colorless spell, <laughs> and it's a sorcery lesson. Seven mana, uh, mascot expedition. Um, I almost said a different name for the first half. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, create a two one white and black inkling creature token with flying, uh, a three two red and white spirit token, and a four four blue and red elemental creature token. Well, we don't have Tron lines, so we can probably pass this one over. Yeah, like, it, it's a limited card to me. Um, I, I don't, I don't see a scene playing anywhere else. Like, that'd be very yeah. weird if it did. Don't worry, guarantee I'll open up the four of these as my mythics, as my first sets. <laughs> While I'm constructed my, uh, mythics. Uh, and the next one, we're getting into a white card. Bird Advisor, Mavinda Students Advocate, three mana, two, three flyer. Um, so think Feather kind of is the way I see this. Uh, for zero mana, once a turn, you can target an instant sorcery in your graveyard and you can cast it. Um, I think, yeah. Yeah, you may cast. So if it's a, sorry. Uh, if it caught, if that spell doesn't target a creature you control. So think pump spells, right? Mm -hmm. So either anything that targets yourself, God's Willing, uh, Infuriate, uh, any kind of bonus on your own. It's basically a feather that doesn't need to be on the field. Um, so you can kind of recycle things that way, which is kind of cool. Uh, it is activate only once per turn. Uh, so it looks like you can do it on your opponent's turn as well. Uh, I don't think the 
I don't know where they came up with eight mana, that being the price, but I think for the zero, it could be something in kind of like a prowess deck. Uh, there are some creatures in the common and common slots with Magecraft that want you to target themselves. So kind of a heroic style deck that we saw in like Theros block, stuff like that could be interesting. Yeah, like it, it looks interesting to me. Um, the eight mana thing does kind of throw me off. Of like where I agree to where did they come up with that? Um, but the ability itself is pretty, this is pretty interesting overall. Um, and being three, a three mana two, two, three flyer, um, seems decent also. Like it has a de uh, decent sized toughness. Yeah, it doesn't die to Bone Crusher Giant. I think that's the benchmark for every creature in this format. Does it die to Bone Crusher Giant? Yeah, like that. That's the part I like about it because it just seems like any creature we play, as long as Bone Crusher Giant is in the format, it's if it's a two ban, it's, if it's two toughness, it doesn't feel relevant to me. Yeah, Exiles pointing out it doesn't change the uh, priority of the spell being instant or sorcery. Uh, however, a lot of those pump spells tend to be instant anyways. Mm -hmm. So um, if you have like multiple gods willings, you can do it like that. Um, so the, the next one, uh, which is really interesting, it's a creature in the first half and a planeswalker in the second half, kind of like uh, Tybalt in the most recent set. Um, but uh, the first half is Mil Milla, Crafty Companion, or one, one, one white, white, two, three, fox. Uh, when an opponent attacks one or more planeswalkers you control, put a loyalty counter on each planeswalker you control. Whenever a permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or an opponent control or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. Then the second, uh, the flip side of it, Luca's coming back. Uh, four red, red, five, uh, five loyalty. Uh, plus one, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. If a creature was discarded this way, draw two cards instead. Minus two, return target creature card from graver to the battlefield. It gains haste. Exile it at the beginning of your next upkeep. And minus seven, you get an emblem with whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Hmm. This card's really good, I think. But yeah. like, especially if you can take advantage of both sides, like just playing the Luka on its own in like a red base deck, I think it's a little pricey at six mana, but Shaper Sanctuary stapled onto a creature. Um, and then it plays well with all, like you can put four of these in your deck, which is really nice being legendary because you can have both sides out. Yep. Um, all the text seems relevant. It's not like uh, the current Luka that's basically got two useless abilities and one combo piece mm -hmm. i can see it, it, this being played in like a super friend stack um like some kind of three three uh three color or four color super friend stack and then just uh maybe throw the other luca in there too just to have like some big dumb bomb creature uh that you just um exile into and then if it dies minus two on this luca to bring it back the only thing with that approach is it, it would hit Mila on the flip too. So generally, if you do something like Dream Trawler, you want your only creatures to be the four of. True. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a cool card. I think I crafted up like something for early access in a Boros shell, kind of mm -hmm. like an aggro. Um, I think being someone there, like in Historic Shaper's Sanctuary, for those of you unfamiliar, it's a green mana, one mana. Whenever uh, something a creature gets targeted, uh, you get to draw a card. So it's a great way when like, you know they eliminate you or they heartless act you well now you get a creature or you get a card out of it so it helps it a bit the art of luca on the normal version looks very boring <laughs> compared to the uh yeah alt art um one looks extremely epic and the other one looks like he's got a hanger in his hand mm -hmm. the fox art in both of both them look really cool though the alt art fox kind of looks almost realism I, I i would get i would i think that's the right term except for the uh glowing aura on it the only slip up they made on this card should have been a werewolf yes that would have been cool but it's a companion i guess so yeah it's not a flip. innistrad's coming there'll be a werewolf planeswalker 
But if you look at the original Luca, um, there is, isn't there like a big giant wolf thing? Or is it a fox? I think it's like a cat or something. Okay. Like a saber tooth tiger. Every time I hear saber tooth tiger, my mind goes to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. <laughs> saber tooth tiger. <laughs> Okay, uh, the next one I know a lot of people are excited about, yeah. and I've so gotten Professor some comments Onyx. in my chat about this card, uh, not the card itself, but... 100% not a Liliana. Just disregard the Planeswalker text. This is Brock. <laughs> You're at the first gym in Pewter City. You just have a Pikachu. You need to go catch a grass type <laughs> because it's useless there. Uh, so Professor Onyx, aka Liliana in this guy's. Uh, six mana, Planeswalker, five loyalty. It has the static ability of Magecraft. Um, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you gain two life and your opponent loses two life. Uh, plus one, you gain, uh, you lose a life, look at the top three cards, put one into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Minus three, each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power uh, that they control. And then minus eight, each opponent may discard a card uh, if they don't, they lose three life, repeat this process six more times. So potentially 21 damage if they're empty handed. Um, instantly, first thought is you got a new target to go with your Celtite Ultimatum piles. I agree. Um, I completely agree. But as we go through more of the cards, it does seem like this set does have enough things to counteract the Celtite Ultimatum. Um, but, anyways, this card. I'm excited for it too. It just we get a. It seems like a really good planeswalker overall. Uh, the art on it's really cool too. I did see Magic Twitter. I think tweet out a picture of the alt art with Liliana having mustache glasses. <laughs> yes, I swear I thought I saw that somewhere. Oh no, um, it was around. People were asking if they could buy that alt art. <laughs> that would be great if it was an actual thing that we get in arena. I would play it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I think even the static, you, like, this is a Planeswalker that can be your win con in something like a hard lock, like Esper Control, um, Abzan Control, even just like a big Golgari deck where you're just overwhelming them with removal. That's the first thing I'm brewing. Niche with drawing cards, it insulates your life total as well. Mm -hmm. um, you're naturally going to want to play instants and sorceries in this type of shell, so it works out really nicely. And my first thought when I saw this was, um, um, like, the, some of the comments that are coming up in chat, but realist <laughs> for magic wise, actual magic wise, um, so uh, my first thought was like some kind of Golgari rock deck in standard, um, with this uh, two or three of in the deck. Um, it's just we're getting a lot of good Golgari spells that I am really hoping that Golgari can actually be a thing, um. So, like, I'm just excited to play the card itself. Um, but moving on to the next card, um, which is, we're getting Will and Rowan again, but they're both on one card. Uh, Rowan, Scholar of Sparks, two in a red, and Will, Scholar of Frost, four in a blue. Uh, so Rowan, uh, stack effect, instant sorcery spells cost one less to cast, uh, two loyalty, Plus one, Rowan Scholar Sparks deals one damage to each opponent. If you, you've you drawn three or more cards this turn, she deals, is that three? Yeah. Three damage to each opponent instead. Uh, minus four, you get an emblem. With whenever you cast instant or sorcery spell, you may pay two colorless. If you do, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for that copy. Then the will side, uh, instant sorcery spells cost one less to cast. Uh, plus one, up to one target creature has base power and toughness of zero two till your next turn. Um, and then minus three, draw two cards. My seven, exile up to five target permanents. For each permanent exile this way, its controller creates a four four blue and red elemental creature token. Yeah, I don't think the will side is in any way playable. Um, if this does see play, I think it's definitely the Rowan side. Um, the cost reduction on instant sorceries is always interesting, especially with the introduction of a lot of storm-based cards in Historic mm -hmm. as part of the um, myth myth Mystic Archives. Um, 
The plus is relatively, the plus is basically just going to read deal one damage. Um, it's unlikely you're going to be drawing three cards a turn. It does ultimate very quickly. Um, so if you can kind of hold off, uh, just doubling your spells seems pretty good. Uh, fringe play. I, I, I don't see it as like a huge standout unless it has a lot of like spell slinger style support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I... I agree. Um, I do have some comments about the set overall, which we'll we'll talk about like once we're done going over the um, the cards that we're speaking of. Um, but like the the boil side does interest me, but it just five mana. It seems like a lot. It seems like a planeswalker deck card. Yeah, I think the the static effect just is what people want for sure. Um. Yeah. Between the two planeswalkers you see on screen, Professor Onyx is a uh, is worlds better. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, <laughs> but moving on to some another elder dragon. More dragons. Shadrick's Silver Quill, five mana, two five, flying double strike. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may choose two. Each mode must target a different player. Very interesting clause mm -hmm. there. Um, so target player gets a 2-1 Inkling token, so it's a 2-1 flyer. Target player draws a card and loses a life. Uh, target player puts a 1-1 counter on each creature they control. So this kind of rewards you for going wide, but there's also the advantage that it provides your opponent. So I guess if you're controlling their board, just keep putting 1-1 counters on their things. Um, it's kind of an army in a can, but you don't really want to give your opponent cards, I would think. And it doesn't close out that, like, it's still a 2-5, even with double strike. Yeah. Like, it, all the dragons that we're getting in the set with the Elder Dragons, they're interesting, they're like, they're high mana costs, but the ability is, the abilities are interesting, and then the power and toughness are somewhat underwhelming. Um me um except for the the uh is it one but uh honestly i think if this card just read like you can choose one of these a turn and yes just didn't have the clause with your opponent it would be infinitely better than i agree your opponent. um it's like it just feels bad just making giving your opponent a 2-1 out of all those abilities i i would only want to give my opponent a 2-1 and i do not want them to have any of the other abilities but then you're just giving them chump blockers every turn. Yeah, that's the bad part. Cool art, though. <laughs> All right, give it a number, Cleef. <laughs> okay, yes. Down for that. Um, Two-Edge Giant. Oh, Commander and Two-Edge Giant. I can see that being interesting. Like just drawing a card uh, in Commander or uh, putting counters on each creature your that player controls. Those two parts are very powerful. Uh, for sure. Yeah, there's also the politics angle. Yes. You're not necessarily rewarding the person directly sitting across from you. Mm -hmm. Um, That is a good thing to point out. Uh, Exile just pointed out, uh, it doesn't say opponent, it says different player. So if this is a 2v2 game, um, you could choose, like, if you're in a, a giant, you can uh, target your um your other uh the player that's playing with you um but yeah. the next one is another elder dragon uh it's simic uh it's for five five mana it's four four um has flying trample oh, i'm sorry uh tanizer wandrix um it's a flying trample whenever it enters the battlefield double the number of plus plus counters on target creature you control and when it attacks, you may have the base power toughness of other creatures you control become equal to uh, Tanizer, uh Quandrix's power and toughness till end of turn. Which, that's interesting. I would picture just like maybe making a big and attacking. Yeah, this is kind of more of an ode to the old Simic ways of just big, dumb, stompy creatures. I will say the full art, the thing I picture is... The original Pokemon movie when Mewtwo's in the test tube and he's kind of just floating in the water. Yes. 
like it's definitely simic-y in the uh full art like when i picture simic i think picture like ravnica simic they're all like doing tests and stuff and like rowing uh like they're doing tests on like or, or organisms and like just living things and just growing stuff so that's what the second the alt art makes me think of yeah uh it's probably a build around like you need to have that in your theme and then running up to our last mythic and the last of the elder dragons Velokmu Velokamus Lorehold seven mana five five flying vigilance haste when it attacks uh look at the top seven cards of your library you can cast an instant or sorcery spell with mana value less than or equal to its power um put the rest at the bottom of your library so i misread this card at first so i built a jeskai luka deck with this into all runes epiphany that was kind of the theme of the deck infinite turns um i think in historic because we are getting time warp time warp is five mana this can help you dig for your time warps um so you can basically in theory get five straight turns or four straight turns after this attacks with haste um so it is something interesting um what are your thoughts jaffer um my thoughts with it is seven mana that's a lot um but like going seven cards deep that seems pretty decent as well um if you're higher end top uh, like a higher end boros deck and not like uh, an aggro deck then maybe as a one or two of but be besides this that, combo that. card you're gonna have to polymorph it out so there's the jet like there's luca and there's the four mana one so i forgot getting... about that card of poly the polymorph card yeah i think like that's the way you have to play this card i don't think you can play it fairly yeah um i agree with i that. will say i will try to take all the turns in historic <laughs> this plus time warp just guy dragons let's go let's do the time warp again <laughs> hitting the rares now so we'll probably just say quickly cover them because we're gonna get a bunch of bulk rares as well in here yeah uh i guess like if we see any that uh seem like bulk rares we could just like mention just bulk rare and, and move yeah. on and if the chat has like any discussion of like why we think it's bulk rare they can bring it up and we can uh quickly talk about that yeah. um so and honestly a majority of these cards i have not seen so i'm going to be taking a minute and reading some of these like how i have been with the uh mythics yeah, so we should probably point out lessons are cards that can be kind of wished for in your sideboard. So certain cards will have an ability called learn. Um, and as part of the learn ability, you can search for a card in your sideboard and put it into your hand. Um, so it does add that kind of fey of wishes, masterminds acquisition kind of niche. Okay. Um, but for this one, academic probation, two mana. We have to choose... It's a choose one of the modes uh choose a non-land card name opponents can't cast spells of the chosen name to your next turn use target non-land permanent till on your next turn it can't attack or blocks activated abilities can't be activated this card i could see probably seeing some play till next turn is the only thing that kind of holds it off if it was like a meddling mage style effect it definitely would as a hate card mm -hmm. um you're basically just time walking your opponent on like an ultimatum or on a lethal attack potentially which that could be relevant in standard in historic i don't think so um yeah. historic's just it's too fast compared to standard yeah at most a niche card yeah um Accomplished Alchemist, four mana, two, five to ramp any color. And then it does have ramp X, where X is the amount of life you gained each turn. It's probably just win more. Yeah. Honestly, it's an EDH that card. Mana. Yeah. It's an EDH card to me. Um, like, that's on the only place I'd want to see you play. Um, like, four mana for a dork, that's too much. Something, something, Isochron Scepter. You 
like uh, gain a bunch of life, ma make infinite mana. This seems like a combo piece in EDH. Yeah. Uh, Archmage Emeritus. Four mana, Metalcraft, and cast a copy and instant source of spell, draw a card. Commander. Dies to Bone Crusher. Yes. This is a commander card to me. Um, I wouldn't play it, even if I played blue. Yeah, it's it's kind of that theme of like draw like loot a card or just draw a card for spells, but too expensive. Mm -hmm. So there's actually a third alternate art that's a buy a box promo that you see here. Um card that could see some play for uh augmenter puglis. And if you want to flip the alternate side. Um, so front side is a 3 mana 3 3 trampler, which stats on its own is pretty good. Then if you control 8 or more lands, it becomes an 8 8 trampler, which just good in the early game, fantastic in the late game, the evasion of trample. Um, and then for 5 mana, you have a sorcery, choose target creature you control. Each other creature you control becomes a copy of that creature uh, until end of turn, except those creatures aren't legendary if the chosen creature is legendary. Um, Think of a Genesis Ultimatum deck with Terra the Peaks. Copy all your Terra the Peaks. Um, this can be uh, Ultimatum into that deck. Frequently has eight or more lands. Yeah. Um, that I can picture too. Like it, the first half like it's just a base creature without the the claws of the eight or more lands it seems okay at that point like on turn three casting this it's just a three three trampler seems okay um but once you get to that later game that seems like it'd be decent um or just ultimating into it but uh it, it seems medium to me like it might be the first half's medium second half of it seems okay it's green though yes <laughs> <laughs> but there's blue on it yeah, but Rumpty will put four of in a deck and you'll have it copied for week one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, Baleful Mastery, four mana. You may pay one of the black rather than pay this swell's mana cost. If you pay that, you an opponent draws a card. Exile heart creature or planeswalker. That seems like it might see play. Me. So... Exile Planeswalker, very powerful. I think the optionality is good. The card draw is kind of a downside in a way. You're not like you're not one for oneing anymore. You're one for zeroing in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, the exile can be relevant though with stuff like Annex, um, the three one indestructible dude in mono white, uh, any kind of effects like that. Yeah, that's definitely true. But like late on turn four if you have no other play just four mana for this that uh ability just eggs on the creature planeswalker that is decent as well um yeah. Braska's contempt saw a lot of play in, in its time in standard mm -hmm. and this gives you the if you need it in a pinch early so you're not holding on to four mana removal uh it could be a, a played in like a demir or saltai deck that plays in our set as well um of like on your opponent's turn after they draw then just go ahead and just pay the two mana and then they can't draw a card yeah this might see more play once heartless act and eliminate rotate out because mm -hmm. like we we do have a glut of really effective two mana uh removal options right now that the conditions aren't really deal breakers in a way uh the next one uh, yeah, the next one's uh, basically garbage. Three mana, look at the top six cards of your hand, a library, put a creature among them into your hand, put the rest of the bottom in any order, gain three life. This card's like one to two mana too much just because they stapled gain three life on it. And because it could be two from your sideboard, this is probably a limited card. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, maybe if like mono red like, had more burn spells, I guess. Um but even then it, it's, you're just draw, like drawing a card it's like a venturous impulse mm -hmm. but too many yeah more. it's just yeah more expensive venture impulse at that point um the next card 
if Winoda becomes a thing, this will see play in there. Four mana, it's hybrid, Boros. Two, three, attack and creatures control, double strike. Yeah, doesn't die to Bone Crusher Giant. Yeah. That, that's the common theme with all this. Yep. Does, it die, does your three or four mana spell die to Bone Crusher Giant? Yeah, this, this with Winota, kill him on the spot. Yes, yeah, like, oh, I just, I have two creatures tacking. Oh, I flipped into this. I flipped into Hakdos. Uh, I have mana, Ember Cleave on the Hakdos or something. I, at that point, I don't need to. Like, if you look at Mono White Aggro, like, maybe not Mono Red, because, like, you have Ember Cleave and Ember Cleave's strictly better. Yeah. But in Mono White, this being your topper, basically doing what Halvar does without the condition of having to be equipped. Mm -hmm. You often have evasive creatures, so, like, Luminarch Aspirant, make a big one. Like, Turn to Luminarch Aspirant, put them all on it, this on turn four. Luminarch is four, six, hits for 12 on turn four. Yeah. Uh, and then removing it. Um... Yeah. Luminar Exile points out this turns on Heliod by itself. Yes, which is could be very good. Like, it could change Mono White to be a Heliod-based aggro deck. Uh, I know in Best of One, it kind of already is a thing, but... Um, best of three that could ch uh, change the deck into playing Heliod. Um, yeah. oh, it also doesn't make it as soft to Shadow's Verdict be being for CMC. Yes, definitely. Um, but yeah, it definitely. But the bad part is uh, you do have a chance to lose Heliod at that point to Shadow's Verdict. Yeah, it's fine. If you if you turn on your Heliod on turn four and it hits for ten. You're doing all right because then you still have a another four power the following turn. Yep. Exiles pointing out mono white clerics with righteous Valkyrie and life linkers. I, I think you gave me an idea for early access. We take into the skies. <laughs> uh, moving on to the next one, we got a vampire warlock. Um... Callous blood mage, three mana, two one enters the battlefield. Uh, choose one, create a pest. So one, one creature, when it dies, gain a life, draw a card, lose a life, or exile target player's graveyard. Low key, this is going to be very good and historic with uh, collector company decks. Graveyards are a huge fact, a part of historic. So being able to potentially instant speed exile. Um, the card draw at the very least, it replaces itself. Um, the pest is fine if you want to go wide in like a sacrifice deck. I mm -hmm. think this can see play. Yeah, especially like um, playing against Arcanist um, or even uh, Cat Oven if they don't have Oven on the field. So they move the combat um, before they attack. You can just flash that in. Or I'm not flashing uh, Coco. Um, or just end step, obviously. Um, just exiling Kroxa from the graveyard will be a big thing. Yeah. Um, I think it's like a it's like Knight of Autumn, it's like a Rex Sage almost. A cyborg card. Um, yeah. You can have fringe cases, but at the very least, it's never it'll probably never be a dead card, because at the very worst case it's a two mana two oh, sorry, three mana two one that's drawn you a card or made you another body. Mm -hmm. The next card Without reading anything on it so far, it just it screams commander at me just seeing the mana cost in it. Uh, Kodai Va v what? Kodai Vak Iferis Codex? Codex? Oh, yeah. It's a name. Uh, it's three, Cody. <laughs> three mana, one for a construct. You can't cast permanent spells. <laughs> Why? <laughs> four tap, add. Uh, Wooberg, and when you cast your next spell this turn, exile cards on top of your library until, you, until your uh, exile an instant or sorcery card lesser mana value. Saying mana value just feels weird. Um, until end of turn, you may ca uh, cast that card without paying its mana cost. Put each other card exiled this way on the bottom of your library in a random order. I, I don't want to play this. <laughs> There's a lot of words here. Yes. And people complained about Questing Beast when it first came out. 
That just usually meant you're dead. This just seems like a lot more steps. Yeah. I I don't well, like it. Um It's probably not something I'll play. Yeah, I don't I don't would it even see constructed? I'm not constructed, limited play? Four mana to filter for five mana. And you can't even cast a permanent spell. Spell this turn, exile cards from top of your Maybe if there's like a storm spell deck. Oh yeah, I forgot about storm, uh, for historic. Cause like uh, we're getting some storm cards on the uh, what are they called again? Archive cards. Mystical archive, yeah. And there's one card that a lot of people are arena zoomers are not gonna know, and they're gonna think it's dumb if storm is broken. Pendrils of agony. Yeah. If this sees play, it's gonna be in some sort of combo deck. Yeah. I don't think if you're just you know casting a spell. Per turn, it's not going to do too much. Mm -hmm. Art's very cartoony. Um, the next one has Liliana on the art. Confront very interesting. The past. Professor Onyx looking at her old self. Is that Gideon behind uh, her? Yeah, it's the War of the Spark when it, Gideon throws himself in the way. I wonder if just I'm kind of sidestepping real quick. I wonder if. This set is supposed to be taking place years after where the spark happened, like in in the lore. Why Gideon of all people? Why save me? Hmm. hmm. Throwback. So this is a black X card. It's a lesson, so it can be tutored. Choose one. Return target planeswalker with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Remove twice X loyalty counters from target planeswalker and opponent controls could see play um good in control mirrors if you were trying to win through planeswalkers mm -hmm. it both uh serves as reanimation for planeswalkers on your side or can be used as removal so an interesting card there yeah um it's gonna be a, yeah for, because of that reason it's more of a sideboard card and um yeah I'm excited to see if we do get more archetypes after this is printed. I'm hoping we do. Um, but uh, the next one... Um, Best name in the set. What was that? Best name in the set. Conspiracy theorist. <laughs> um, so one in a red, two to you. When uh, attacks, you may pay one and discard a card if you do draw a card. That ability seems good. Uh, whenever you discard one or more non-land cards, you may exile one of them from a graveyard. If you do, you may cast it this turn. The only thing that I'm worried of is Bone Crusher. Yeah, but think in the place of Rimrock Knight. Like, yeah. Rimrock is a terrible card that just saw play because there was no better two drops. Mm -hmm. um, in Historic, Burning Tree into this. Um, just reconfirms that the Shuffler is rigged. <laughs> yeah and just like in mono red filter in your hand like discard uh, i'll pay one to discard this basic mountain to draw a new card that will definitely help out for sure well even discard a card and then cast that card but still get another card in hand mm -hmm. exile is pointing out in chat uh in cycling cycling is a discard effect so even if you don't use it for its ability the first half the discard allows you to cast it afterwards okay yeah so, have this attack with it. Have five man available. Discard the Zenith Flare. I know that probably doesn't matter. No, that would be a dumb. That would be dumb. Um, <laughs> you should just be casting at that <laughs> point. I don't know why I would think that. <laughs> I don't think you've played much cycling, have you? Uh, I did when uh, it was first the deck, and that's why I played for two seasons to get me to Mythic, and I hate playing the deck now. Um, so the next card, I am super stoked about it. It's Goldbari. Yes. Uh, so Calling Ritual. Two black, green, four mana. Destroy each non-land permanent with mana value two or less. Also, we should probably point out mana value is the new name for... Um, converted mana cost which is weird um, 
And then for each permanent destroyed this way, you add either black or green mana. So this is an interesting card against low to the ground aggro. Um, it can potentially pay for itself, if not even ramp you, depending on the board state. I think against cycling, we were just speaking of that. They have a board of all their little angel or uh, fairies, mm -hmm. their probable alliance tokens, kill ten things, ramp ten mana. Yeah, like it's. I think it'll be a pretty decent card. I think it's gonna be sideboard based on the meta, how the meta looks like. So maybe if mono red, mono white, and cycling are still big and standard, this could be a main board card, like a two of or something like that, and then a dead card if you're up against another, another match, but um, or another deck. I mean, but uh, I think it'll be for sure see some play. Um, just get destroying all those things, getting all that mana, and just say they had 10 things oh i got lilian on the field now okay <laughs> like i think that'll be for it'll be a pretty good card especially against like an historic against like um maybe some gruel matchups depending on like what their board state looks like um mono red auras just to at least get a, like two turns out of it uh, of casting this and then having two turns to live because they have to rebuild then. Um, I think yeah, it'll pro it. probably see some play in, so in the question in chat is can you select if you say kill five things, do you get to filter your choice of black or green, like two black, three green? The way it's worded is a bit ambiguous. I don't know. The way it's worded, add black or green for each permanent destroy this way, I think it's going to be one or the other. That's something that we'll have to look into. Yeah. Um. We'll, ca we'll cast it and see. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much what's probably going to happen. <laughs> um. So the next one, uh, culmination of studies. Uh, it's an is it card X blue red sorcery exile top X cards your library for each land card. Exile this way, create a treasure token. For each blue card, exile this way, draw a card. For each red card, exile this way, combination of studies deals one damage each opponent. I feel mixed about it. It's not that good. Maybe if it was instant speed. For each line card, exile this way, create a treasure token. Yeah, it's... Yeah, that's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> You're um, just, there's better things to do if you have that much mana to really pay off. Yeah. Like, maybe just another EDH card at that point. Or it could be uh, a limited card, I guess. Um, seeing the art it and looking at the bottom right of the card, it is something to do with the story, though. Um, which I'm I am in interested to find out what the story is going to be like for Strixhaven. I actually might take the time and read about it this this time. Shoot me over the Coles notes after. What was that? Shoot me over the Coles notes after. <laughs> I feel like we've uh, we've flip flopped what we should. I should be presenting all these Izzet cards, and you should be getting all the Golgari ones. But it seems like it's the other way around. Yeah, every time we get to an Izzet card, I get it, and then you, mm -hmm. we get to a Golgari, you get it. You're just um, looking at blue like I, I, an instant speed card. <laughs> Uh, if you uh, want to, we can flip it. No. Sure. This 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 is a this is a Jaffer card. Okay. Uh. So, demo, uh, de, demo goth titan. I think that's how how it's pronounced. Uh. It's a demon. T Eleven ten. Uh. Four mana hybrid Golgari. First thing that pops my mind when it looking at the art, it looks. It reminds me of Kozilek. Like all the things that of like the little things that cause like like the extra arms and just like has some kind of like moss growing on it it's a demon though uh whenever it attacks or blocks sacrifice a creature um yeah kind of the, the ability is kind of like an ode to annihilator with the sacrifice on attack trigger yeah um the text so this can be it's a big vanilla with pests, you have synergy to allow it to attack in. My mind goes to uh, Gigantosaurus. Like, everybody thought, like, not everybody, like, I myself 
and some people at my LGS I, I used to go to all the time um, thought like Gigantosaurus was going to see some plain standard. It never did. If it did, it died right away. Um, so my mind goes to that. I don't think it's going to see play. If it does, it's going to be super fringe and maybe it'll be just played in like a fling deck. Like play it, then fling it right away. There is the um, the instant sac uh, when target creature dies, create uh, that many pests equal to its power. Oh, that thing. Maybe there could be a deck for that. Just get 11 one ones. They have flying too, right? No, they have when it dies, you gain life. Oh, okay, okay. But still, just having 11 one ones, that might be okay. Um, and I believe that card's instant speed. Yeah. But uh, the flavor text on it, of course, it offered you power. Demons always do. But trust me, the sweeter the prize, the more ruinous the prize. Professor Onyx. So Liliana is talking from her experience in that quote. It's an interesting one. Alrighty. Devastating Mastery. Two white, 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 white. Um, this gives you the option to um, pay four mana rather than its converted mana cost. Uh, so if you pay full price, it's planar cleansing, destroy all permanents for six mana. Uh, if you pay four mana, uh, an opponent gets to choose up to two non-land permanents and return it to their hand. We don't really see planar cleansing style effects if you're going hard control, but usually with those, they're not the best just because you usually want to win for, um, like with planeswalkers, so this kills your own planeswalkers. Yeah, like, I get this picture just with the mana cost. My mind, seeing the mana cost goes to Commander, seeing the alternate mana cost, it, I just see it as another board wipe um, that Control might play, but it doesn't seem that great. I'll just play Doomscar or Shattered Sky instead. Yeah. Um, the next right. one is a Simic card, double major. Uh, it's an instant, just cost Simic. Copy target creature spell you control, except it isn't legendary if it's, if the spell is legendary. Okay. Double Vorinclex? Yeah, I got two Vorinclexes. Does that double the triggers then on your side of like double co the counters? Uh, I think it played Jerubles. Hmm. Cause it's X2, they see each other. So the oh. first one doubles, and then it doubles again. So it's X to the two. Gamer ultimatum with this. Just uh, copy your uh, um, pair of the peaks before you ultimate them. Like on your opponent's end step, copy your tear of the peaks and then go ultimate them on your turn. Yeah, it's probably a win more card, but... Probably. There will be a screenshot somewhere on Twitter. Yes, there's going to be. <laughs> A uh, card that could see some play, uh, Draconic Intervention. Four mana as additional cost to cast this spell. Exile an instant or sorcery from your graveyard. Draconic Intervention deals X damage each non-dragon creature where X is the exiled card's mana value. Um, and then you exile those creatures. Um, so we saw the uh, eight mana Magus, whatever the is it card. Yeah. Um, you can discard it for treasure and then deal eight damage to all non-dragons. So we saw is it dragons playing Storm's Wrath at one point, which isn't great because it kills your own dragons. Mm -hmm. This allows you to have that same kind of four mana board wipe effect, uh, which those decks generally need because there are struggles against aggro based decks, um, but it keeps your dragons alive. Yeah, I, I could picture like just seeing this card now. Um, I could picture is it tempo coming back but just more dragon based now with the, the new elder dragon this card probably some other cards we haven't seen yet going in this list of cards yeah um so i i agree with lc play um next one a dragon's guard dragon guard elite one green two two mage craft when you cast a cop cast a copy and a source spell put plus plus counter on it uh, it just seems like a bulk rare to me, in my opinion. 
So this one's interesting if you are playing um, like a heroic deck, because this puts a counter on it every time you cast an instant or sorcery, so it gets bigger. So in something like Feather, um, you can see Return to Naya Feather. Uh, it is a build around card. You do need the supporting. In and of itself, it's not that great. But if you do have kind of that heroic shell, I think it can be good because those heroic decks used to have the one mana card that had a similar effect mm -hmm. um, that it whenever it got targeted. This is just whenever you cast. So even if you cast like a burn spell or a removal spell, it also triggers on it. And it also has like an uh, alternate art for buy a box too. All right. Well, the best thing about that alternate art is now we're back to two per row. <laughs> <laughs> um, this next one interests me, kind of. So dra dramatic finale. Either four black, four white, or a hybrid. Creature tokens you control get plus one one. So in this theme, you have inklings. Uh, there's spirits as well, something like Clarion Spirit. Uh, whenever one or more non-token creatures you control die, create a two one uh, inkling. Uh, this ability triggers only once per turn. I think that last line really hinders how great it would be. Mm -hmm. uh, thinking against like a board wipe deck. Notably, though, a lot of the removal and the board wipes in this format are exile based, so it gets around this uh, die condition. So it probably will not see much play, at, at least at this juncture. If Doomscar moves into being the premier board wipe, I can see maybe. Yeah. As like a Doomscar insurance. The first part of it, creature tokens, you control like a plus one, plus one. That's what interests me. Um, if tokens were like a legitimate strategy uh, or deck in the. Um, standard then this could probably see play i think but i agree I like board wipes just cards like glorious anthem that don't see play for three mana and that's not restricted to just tokens either true it has seen fringe play in some tournament play but ladder play i haven't seen it do anything yeah just the four with his mono white deck mm -hmm. uh the next one dream Strix. it's a bird illusion two blue three two uh, it becomes a target of a spell, sacrifice it. When, it. when it dies, learn. You may reveal a lesson card you own from outside the game and put it into your own hand or discard a card to draw a card. It More seems interesting to me or as a card. Yeah, if learn ever picks up, it could be, but that's the bone crusher. True. Oh, no, actually, but if they bone crusher it, you sacrifice it, so it fizzles. Yes, so that, it that was my... Yeah, that was going to be my counter, my counter argu or an argument to that, because like, yeah, you can kill my three two flyer, but you're going to lose your bone crusher. It's good uh, for good, um, and I get a card on my my sideboard to replace this in my hand. Yeah. So maybe it might see play, but it could it's just be honestly dependent on how good the the lesson cards are. But yeah, in draft it seems good. And none of the lesson cards really stood out to me yet. Nah, they're all overpriced thus far. Uh, the next one... Now again, this is a card. The Freet's back. If Freet Flame Painter. Four mana, one four double strike. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, uh, you may cast instant or sorcery card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. Uh, exile that card if you cast it. This plus the is it cards, the eight mana one that you discard for two. So turn two, discard it, make a treasure. Turn three, cast Efri. Turn four, if you can get through. Um, it's an interesting kind of card. Um, if, with Allrun's Epiphanies, Allrun's Exiles, though, I think. Time Warp doesn't. The Time Warp doesn't. Yeah, Time Warp um, doesn't. Allrun's does. So it does have some pretty high upside. You do need to, to get through. Mm -hmm. Slap an Ember Cleave on it. Well, also, like, if um, you were forced to discard all runs Epiphany or an ultimatum, then it's just target then. Yeah. Um, but good point out in the uh, chat. It, there's no evasion on it. 
besides the, the only evasion on it is it dies to black removal easily in order to kill it with red removal you're, you're gonna have to use two burn spells um yeah. well the next card is an is it card so oh let me take it's got blue spells let me um <laughs> so this is a lot of words it'll turn on perforos <laughs> <laughs> Four mana, four four Magecraft. Here's an encyclopedia. Uh, whenever you cast or or copy an instant or sorcery spell, choose a target creature you control until end of the turn. If that cr this creature would leave the battlefield, exile it instead. Um, and when you exile it, you get a four four. Um, so it's kind of like damage or like removal insurance. Uh, if you're playing like a tempo game, they try to kill your spell. You could potentially upgrade it. Um, probably won't see much play. Casting cost is fairly restricted. F four mana, the like the dragon's a lot better. Mm -hmm. it, it interests me that they made an orc wizard. <laughs> like that's the only thing I have to say of it, really. And it's just kind of odd, like the the orc on it is just like neat like sitting and kneeling on the elemental thing oddly with doing a weird hand stance <laughs> <laughs> well we can say it turns on party <laughs> yeah uh and then next one i know um another streamer hearsay mtg is super excited about this one uh elite spellbinder two and a white three one uh, I believe PVDDR got to spoil the or preview this card on uh, the day of the last day of the um, of the championship. Um, it's a flying human. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, look at target opponent's hand. You may exile a non-land card from it for as long as that card remains exiled. Its owner may play it. Um, it a spell cast this way costs two more to cast. Actually, no, I'm sorry. That was a different card I was thinking of of that hearsay. I was super excited about it. Yeah. But PVDDR did get the preview of this one. It's an interesting tax card. It is. Like, it's making a board wipe. Like, taking it out of their hand, making it cost two more. Mm -hmm. Could be meaningful. Definitely. Um. Oh, even it even says uh, PVDDR's name on it. World Championship. Yeah. Okay. So is, when you win the, the Mythic Champion, or the World Championship... It'll be the Jaffer card, blue hair and all. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get there first. <laughs> um, Next card's complete, like bulk rare, just double. It's just one of the generic big pump spells. I think we can pass on that one. Yeah, I agree. Well, it looks uh, cool though. Um, yeah. Fervent mastery, five mana. You can pay four instead. Um, if four was paid, an opponent discards any number of cards and draws that many. Search your library for three cards, put them into your hand, shuffle them, discard three cards. It's a weird gamble. The only thing I could think of is like past and flame piles, but just seems really like a random card. It, it again, this might be some sort of combo graveyard deck, but on its own, not that great. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, the next one, it's a Boros card, ran the first half, uh, white on the second half. Flame Scroll, Celebrant, one in a red, two, one. Uh, it's a human shaman, when an opponent activates an ability that isn't a man ability, uh, Flame Scroll, Celebrant deals one damage to that player, one in a red, it gets plus two, plus oh, to win a turn. Um, I like the flavor text, stand up and fight. Uh, it rem uh, it screams Cruel Celebrant to me on the first half. Um, just not as good and dies easier. Uh, I wish it was two toughness so it didn't die to um, devil activations in his in Historic. Yes. I'm trying to find a card for Mono Red that just doesn't auto die to um, Catoven. Yeah. Cruel Celebrant would be one, but that that's two toughness, I believe. Um, yeah. But the second half of this, uh, it's Revel in Silence, two white, uh, white, white. Uh, it's instant. Your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities. A Planeswalker, sorry, your opponents can't cast spells or activate Planeswalker loyalty abilities this turn. 
exile, revel, and silence. So this is just basically silence almost. But kind of. Niche. Um, I don't. I don't see see revel and silence being relevant, really, unless if it's like one of those one-off situations. It'll blow out an ultimate of Teferi once, but for the most part, if you're casting that as a control player, you're happy that they spent their turn spending two mana. Yeah. Um. Okay. So wait, so with this, can you if when they go to activate the fairy or a planeswalker, can you in response do this? No, never mind. It was, sorry, in the stack, they already activated their planeswalker. So the ability yeah, has to go through. It. You have to do it on like upkeep. Okay. Or in between uh, phases. All right. And then uh, so, the next one. So we're getting the uh, tango line, no fast lines. The the show lands. I show I, lands. I think that's what they're called. Last we saw them was in the, um, the last time we were in Indistrad. Yeah. So these are generally more suited towards aggro style decks. Um, just to have untapped duels, they're not super reliable because you still need to have some number of. Uh, mountains or plains or islands or mountains uh, but you generally will play these in more aggressively slanted decks and, which is good because a lot of the duels right now in the format are always coming to play tap so it naturally leads to more control mm -hmm. based strategies triumphs will definitely help out with this too yeah um so just basically we like we got the other half that we didn't get originally so we got the is it one the boros one now we got kogari um oh, what's the Cynic other and orisov okay yeah so like those ones are gonna be great to have um which the next one is gnarled professor <laughs> the tree will druid just laughing at the name it's uh two green green trample when you cast on a professor enters the battlefield i'm sorry when it enters the battlefield uh learn so you just, it's it's a card you get less less than out um remember but, when five five four tramplers were good for four yeah and then now then we get eldrine and it's like oh i got a three mana four three <laughs> here's my three mana five five but it also makes a one one yes yeah I miss Steel uh, Champion in standard. <laughs> so here's Hall of Oracles, which is your token um, colorless land that does very fringe things that will see no play whatsoever. Uh, limited, probably, but maybe not. Um, The next one, Illuminate History, two red red, Sorcery Lesson. Discard any number of cards, then draw that many cards. Then if there are seven or more cards in your graveyard, a 3-2 red and white spirit creature token. I do not picture the scene play outside of no. Limited. No. Kind of going with the theme of lessons just not being very good. Yeah. You pay a premium to be able to access them, but they all seem overcosted by one to two. Mm-hmm. So, blue card, Ingenious Mastery. Uh, blue 2x, uh, you can choose to pay uh, three as a pose. Um, so it's a three mana, draw three, but your opponent gets two treasures and they scry two. Or if the cost wasn't paid, uh, uh, you can pay, uh, draw x cards. Um, so it's like divination that ramps and set up your opponent's draw or like better than divination or you can just draw X and kind of draw a bunch of cards. So you're really only seeing that same for X equals three. So six mana kind of pricey. Maybe just as a combo card, if you just want to draw cards for three mana and you don't really give your opponent a turn after that, like all in that turn. Yeah. Like. Besides, I don't think it would see play. My, my thought right away was like control and then they have counter magic. But why would you give your opponent more mana in that point moment? If it was instant, maybe so you can do it on your end step, like on your opponent's end step. But... Yeah. 
I think it's one of those, if, you, if you're not giving your opponent another turn and you just need to draw three cards for three mana, it's a pretty good rate. Mm -hmm. The next one's a Summit card. Uh, it's green on the first half and blue on the second half, uh, which is interesting. It turns from an Elf Druid to a blue wizard. Uh, or you can cast one or the other. Um, the Elf Druid's that Kiani, Dean a uh, Substance. Um, it's a 2-2. Two -two. Tap, exile, top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it your hand, into your hand. Otherwise, put a study counter on it. Uh, four and a green, create it. Oh, oh, green and blue fractal creature token. Plus the plus counter on it for each different mana value on non land cards. You own an exile with study counters on them. Eh. Right away in the first half to me. Um, the blue half, Imbraham. Imbraham? Imbraham? Maybe. Dean of Theory? <laughs> uh, it's a blue wizard 3-3. Three, three. That's flying. Uh, X, blue, blue, tap, exile, top X cards your library, put and put a study counter on each of them. Then you may put a card you own in exile with a study counter on it into your hand. I don't... I, I just don't... I don't like it's, either. It's got a lot of words that don't do much. Yeah. Commander, again, to me. Yeah. Uh, one that might see constructive play is Leonin Lightscribe. Two mana, two, two, Magecraft. Whenever you cast instant or sorcery, creatures you control get plus one, one. So think of all those pump spells. If you have a go wide board, you know, pump one of your things, all your things get a pump. So it's an interesting card there and a little bit more of an aggressive deck. It's really with that theme, I think it's just depending on how good the combat spells are to really make it worthwhile to play that strategy. Yeah, and like, it's a cat. <laughs> it's a cleric. It's a cat cleric. Um, It's interesting. It's another two mana creature that, like two mana creatures are always nice. Um, the next one, we're getting into a command, the Boros command, three, red, white, choose to create a three, two, red and white spirit creature token, creatures of control, get plus one, plus zero, gain indestructible and haste on the turn. Uh, Laurel command deals three damage to any target, target player gains three life. And the last part, sacrifice permanent and draw two cards. This one's interesting. The converted, like the mana cost is pretty high for it being in an aggro deck. You also don't want to necessarily rely on it as a board wipe insurance. Again, exile being the predominant type of removal. Mm -hmm. The instant's nice, but it's like weird too, because I like guess control, you don't really want to sack a land to be able to draw two cards. I think it's going to be more for creature-based uh, Boros decks um, or Naya, but it it just it does seem like a lot of mana at the same time. But the modes aren't bad. Like they just, I don't know. Like I, I think I would try it in a Boros con uh, creature-based deck, but I don't think I'd be completely happy with it. Yeah, a four mana. I think we're. A lot more inclined to play it at five it's a little iffy yeah like maybe as a singleton or two at, at most i do find the art funny though of how there's a little dwarf shooting from a scroll it's the whole gang you got <laughs> elephant you got the bazooka something flying in the background So we have Manifestation Sage. So wrapping up the hybrid, um, kind of been joking that it turns on some of the gods, but this turning on Thassa with its ability is actually really reasonable. Um, it's a four mana two, two, that when it enters the battlefield, you get to create a token um, that is power and toughness, uh, or it's an X with counters on it equal to the amount of cards in your hand. Thassa can blink it so you can keep getting multiple copies and get more fractals. Um, so it's an interesting card in that type of like blink archetype. Mm -hmm. The only bad part about it, that's the Bone Crusher, like a lot of cards. 
Yeah, and if it's a top deck late game when you don't have cards in hand, it doesn't actually make tokens. Yeah. It is interesting, though. Um, a lot of these, uh, car like, just the hybrid cards are pretty interesting. Um, next card's a blue card. Okay, so let me take this, because then you have a Golgari land. <laughs> <laughs> so, multiple choice. Blue and an X. If X is one, scry one and draw a card. So, two mana, draw a card. X is two, uh, choose a player. They return a creature they control to its owner's hand. If X is three, you create a four, four. If X is four or more, you get to do all of the above. So, five mana, draw, bounce, create a token. I think, like... The going rate for all those is pretty fair. Yeah. Um, I don't have much to say except for like, I like the name and the mana cost. The man, no, sorry, the mana value. Uh, the mana value on it is interesting. Like at first, when I saw the man, the mana cost. I, like, I thought it was like a different kind of opt when I saw like the name and. Uh, the mana cost and then just like the first part made me think of opt as well um yeah but it, interesting if it, an if it was an instant then it'd be really good oh yeah um the next one i really like the art on these lands uh it's just it's a golgari show land like um it's golgari <laughs> mm -hmm. um yeah the card after that, though, it is a black human warlock. That's three, uh, three, three. Um, uh, I think it's a bulk, bulk rare. Yeah, it's just enabling the theme. But if you're doing that each turn for four mana, you're probably losing. Mm -hmm. But it <laughs> does look like a really clean, cool looking art on it. Um, yeah. If I just saw the potential for EDH, like in tombs, stapled onto a creature. Yeah, definitely. Um, I do think like with a lot of the newer sets, they are being kind of generous to like it's not bad that they're doing this, but they're being generous to EDH players. Like they're printing more EDH playable cards, which is cool. Because that shows that they're they're wanting to support more more than just standard with their base sets now yeah um don't forget about brawl that too i always forget <laughs> about that <laughs> do you so, want to get the next one yeah pestilence cauldron it's a flip golgari card um front side three mana artifact discard a card you create a pest for a mana each opponent mills cards equal to the number of life you gain this turn and then four mana exile target card from a graveyard, draw a card, or exile four, draw a card. Um, could be kind of weird inverse tech for rogues when you do it yourself, but it seems kind of bad versus escape. Um, restoration burst, which is the flip side, five mana return up to two target creature, land, or planeswalker cards from your graveyard to your hand. Um, this just seems like a really overcosted build around card. Mm -hmm. I agree. Like it, it would be more. I I think it'd be more on theme and better if it was like return to the battlefield instead. Yeah. But for five mana, return two things to the battlefield in standard. That would be a bit too powerful, I think. Agreed. Uh, the next one is another flip card. Boros. Uh, Pl Plarg. Dean of Chaos. Um, 2-2. Two, two. That is a bone crusher. Uh, tap, discard a card, draw a card. Or in red, tap, reveal cards on top of your library. Tell you, reveal a non-legendary, non-land card with mana value 3 or less. May pass that card without paying its mana cost. Uh, put all revealed cards that uh, not cast its way onto the bottom of your library in a random order. Um, that ability seems maybe all right if it gets to live. Um, just five mana to do that. That seems like a lot. But uh, Augusta or Augusta. 
Augusta. Augusta. Dean of Order. Um, <laughs> two and a white. One, three. Other tap creatures control get plus one, plus oh. oh that seems pretty good. Other untap creatures control get plus one. Oh, plus one. Whenever you attack, untap each creature you control, then tap any number of creatures you don't or you control. What? Wait. Whenever you attack, untap each creature you control, <laughs> then tap any number of creatures you control. Pseudo vigilance. Okay. All right. Um, and then you can play around where you want your creature to have more toughness or more power. Yeah. Chat's pointing out this with Magda with your uh, dwarfs to make treasure tokens. It's an interesting card. That is. It's Doctor Strange. <laughs> That's all I see in the art. Yeah. Oh, so like with Mag. Oh yeah, yeah, that does seem interesting with Magda. Just make more treasure, and then just cast more things after combat. Yeah. So next is Poet's Quill, which is probably unplayable. Two mana equipment that equips for two and gives plus one one in life link and also learns. The thing that we've learned is that the less the learn cards are pretty bad. Yeah, it costs too much or just seem odd. Uh All we right. got some commands coming up. We got two of them. Yeah, um let me take is it you take Simic? Sure. <laughs> um Prismari command or bad electrolyze. <laughs> Three mana instant, uh, shock something, uh, draw two, discard two, create a treasure token, or destroy target artifact. Uh, nowhere near as good as Colgan's command, not the worst command in the world. Uh, could be decent. Like, I think in historic, if you can blow up an oven and like shock a low strider, you're coming out pretty far ahead. Yep, um, that seems like the only good part of it. Um, the art makes me think of like like a um, a coral reef in the background, yeah, like the color scheme. It looks it just looks like plants too, like un, under the sea, and then all of a sudden you see electricity at the top right. See a zoo way, <laughs> steampunk. <laughs> And then next one we got Quandrix com command, uh, three mana, use two, instant, uh, return target creature planeswalker to its owner's hand, counter target artifact or enchantment spell, but two plus one plus counters and target creature, uh, target player shuffles up to three target cards from their graveyard into their library. Eh. It doesn't really do anything meaningful. Yeah. I guess. It's a tempo play. The only, the only thing, Hengen and Scalds, like the Sagas of counters. Yeah, and and Embercleave. So like, if say you're playing against Mono Red, um, playing against Mono Red, and you go to block, and then you go to Embercleave, you counter the Embercleave and put a counter on another creature to be able to kill theirs. That's yeah. the only other good part about it. I see. Yeah, like it's. I say I think Prismari is a bit better. Mm hmm more proactive uh radiant scroll wielder is pretty lackluster four mana two four instant sorcery spells you control have lifelink you can exile a at the beginning of your upkeep exile instant or sorcery at random from your graveyard you can cast it for the turn so kind of playing into the self mill um pretty bad i think yeah uh I it just it ma makes me think of uh, the buy box promo from Dominaria and the static effect. Yeah. That was like $40 card because it was so hard to get. Yeah. And then barely saw play. Yeah. Um, the, I, the only thing I like about this card really is the art. I like how the person, the cleric in the art, is using a scroll as a shield. Or is it a shield that they're doing? Yeah. So it's like yeah, absorbing like some kind of flame and then they're healing themselves, it looks like. The most buffed m m magical dwarf. <laughs> uh, the next one, we got another, got a phoenix. It seems like every set we're going to phoenix now, which is kind of cool. Um, three and a red, uh, two, two, 
Fine haste, uh, when it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, learn. As long as it's in your graveyard, if you would learn, you may instead turn uh, Fe Retriever Phoenix to the battlefield. So I guess if any of the other cards that do have learn, instead of, like, maybe if you're playing red, this probably would just definitely be better to get a two mana, or a, sorry, a two two flying haste back. I don't know, this card seems really bad. Even, like, you're jumping through hoops and playing bad cards to get a 2-2 back. True. But also, like, one thing we gotta think of, like, everything, I think, a lot of things seem underwhelming right now because of L-Train. I know, that... but if you look at, like, Chandra's Phoenix being a 3-mana that triggers whenever your opponent was dealt damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At some point, it's a bad arc like Phoenix. Um, this next card I'll take. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rush Rebirth. It's Golgari. Instant. Uh, two star creature. When this creature dies this turn, search your library for a creature card with lesser mana value. Go into the battlefield, then shuffle. My thought right away is if there's some good one drop, play this in Jund with Kroxa. Go to cast Kroxa. Uh, in response or hold priority. Uh, to the sack trigger, you just do rush rebirth targeting, Roxa. Um, maybe against like uh, a cyber card against like control decks that have board wipes. Um, they go to wipe the board, just cast this targeting on your creatures, and after it dies, just you get another creature to replace it. It seems pretty good, I think. Yeah, so notably you can choose any target creature, so you can target your opponent's creatures, kill it, you get a creature out of it. Oh, uh, that I didn't, thing, didn't notice, actually. Uh, it's with lesser mana value, so the Croxa line, um, you would only get a 1 CMC. Mm -hmm. So you can kill something, so like, you know, kill their 4-drop, get like a Clothis out of your deck. Seems pretty good. Or like just kind of toolboxy. Yeah. Seems pretty sweet. It is. There's another Golgari card, it's two mana that I'm excited about as well. We haven't come across it yet though. We'll um get to. the next one seems interesting, kind of. Yeah, so Sedge More Witch uh three mana, three two menace, ward. So this is another ability we actually haven't come up to this point um but it's kind of that uh terror the peaks ability uh if you want to target it uh you have to pay three life otherwise it gets countered um and then it has magecraft whenever you cast instant or sorcery you get to create pests so the combo that i saw is if you go this into yarshan your opponent can't pay life so they technically can never target Sedgemore, which... Hmm. Which is kind of cool. But otherwise it dies to Bone Crusher. Yeah. <laughs> Feels like everything that like we've been going over like just dies to Bone Crusher. So many things. <laughs> um... The next one, uh, Selfless Lift Weaver. Uh, it's two white. Exile uh, Selfless Glyph Weaver. Creatures you control gain indestructible to on a turn. Uh, it's two three, so it doesn't die to Bone Crusher, which is nice. Um, dead Vanity. Oh, Deadly Vanity, sorry. Five black, black, black. Sorcery. Choose a creature or Planeswalker, then destroy all other creatures and Planeswalkers. I think you're playing it on the front side as a selfless savior, not self, uh, selfless spirit, but to the modern one or the pioneer one. I think this card gets better once extinction event leaves the format. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Like as long as we have an exile effect board wipe, it just doesn't seem that great right now. Yeah. Uh, semester's end, which makes you think oh look collected company but uh it's basically a mass blink effect 
um, at the beginning of the next end step. So you could kind of create a Yorian style effect, um, blink everything, and then they all come back with 1-1 one -one counters on it. Uh, you can also target Planeswalkers, so it's a good kind of effect in that fashion. Yeah. Um, sorry, I was distracted by uh, my cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that seems pretty decent. Um, the art looks kind of cool, too. Like, they're celebrating that their semester's over. Uh, the next one's another flip card. Um, sh 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 Shaley? Shaley? Something or another. I'm just going to know Shaley, Dean of Radiance. Uh, it's a bird cleric. 1-1 one, one, dies to Bone Crusher. Uh, it's a flying vigilance. You tap it, put a counter on each creature that entered the battlefield under your, uh, your control this turn. Then the other side is a human warlock for two black black, 4-4. Uh, four, four. Uh, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on another creature, creature, then Ambrose, Dean of Shadow, deals two damage to that creature. Interesting. Whenever a creature you control with a 1-1 one, one counter on it dies, draw a card. It's like a slow aspirant. Let's you go wide, but kind of wants you to build a like keep committing to the board to get the counters, which just kind of opens you up to a board wipe. Mm -hmm. And typically you'd play this in like a weenie strategy so the two damage can be quite impactful. The Dean of Shadow makes me think of like some like just art. It looks like some kind of like lied person that I don't know. Like he's gonna lie to you no matter what he says, even if he doesn't mean to. I guess just to get his way of anything. Do what you need to do. <laughs> All right, so we have another of the showlands in Shine Shadow Snarl. Um, so we've kind of covered those. So we can jump ahead. Uh, it's some more Orzhov cards. So this is the cool emo kids uh, command, silver cool command. This one's actually pretty good. Um, so this we've had the theme of targeting your own creatures. Well. This targets gives them 3-3 three, three and flying, so evasion. Um, it also reanimates uh, a creature card with two mana or less. It lets you draw a card, and it can force your opponent to sack a creature. So far, I think this one's the best command. Yeah, I agree. Um, the art is just kind of cool, too. It's like, they're show like... My mind, like, we're here to fuck shit up. <laughs> yeah. We just gotta get you a trench coat, and then you can be in the cert. <laughs> I was a time I heard the black then. Yeah. <laughs> um, next one, Silver Quill Silencer. Uh, this one's pretty cool. It's an Orzhov creature. Uh, it just costs white and black, 3-2. Enters battlefield, choose a non-land card name. Whenever an opponent casts a spell with the chosen name, they lose three life and you draw a card. Um meddling mage vibes art and all yeah definitely uh, who did meddling age mage art um not not the original the, the newer one like nice. that i'm interested sure. in now but if humans can become a thing in historic this definitely was see playing there um todd, todd lockwood no different artist maybe they took uh i can picture them like taking meddling mage like as a reference for the art style yeah um i think this will see play even though it dies to bone crusher easily like it, it does die to a lot of removal but i think it will see play yeah at the very least it's a two mana three two yeah that could potentially draw you a card 
and then bolt them for three. Mm -hmm. And you you get yeah, and just get get a card to replace. It's pretty good too. Yeah. Um, yeah. The but, next card's garbage. We can probably skip it. The bulk. Strict Proctor is one that um. Yes. Hi. Um. <laughs> That's the one that I know um uh here Sam TG was excited about. Uh it's one in a white, one three flying, it's a spirit as well. Um, and a cleric. So uh whenever an a per a permanent entering the battlefield causes a trigger a triggered ability to trigger, counter the ability unless it's control pace to colorless. So I have this, I play um What's that land called? That this is the, the why you <laughs> Lotus Field? Yes. Play Lotus Field. Cool. It enters untapped and I can I don't have to sack lands. I believe it enters untapped. Opponent, you play this on turn two and your opponent cast Crocs on their turn two. Ooh, yeah, that'd be bad though, then. So it's the it's the Hushbringer quandary. Yeah. Like it, so I guess like it really depends on the deck, I guess. Um I don't know. It seems pretty cool, kind of, but bad at the same time. Yeah. Um so we can jump in Strixhaven Stadium. Uh three mana. Uh you can add a colorless mana and you put a point counter on Strixhaven Stadium. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, you remove a counter, and then it's basically a race. Um, if your creatures deal damage to the opponent, you put a counter on it. If you have 10 or more counters, you win the, you win the game. Your opponent loses. Um, really where this got called out is in Paradox Engine decks. You can basically go infinite with tap on tap. So you mm -hmm. just tap this 10 times, and you win the game. Yeah, that will be dumb to lose to for sure. The I'm sure it's gonna happen. Cards. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I saw it on TikTok and Twitter. Garbage Andy, another streamer, great person, hilarious person, makes hilarious content. Um, he did a TikTok, basically, compl uh, not complaining, but venting about how Wizards of the Coast basically took Harry Potter and made Strixhaven out of it without, like. Being able to collaborate with uh, whoever owns Harry Potter, um, Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers. Um, and if you look at the art of Strixhaven Stadium, it looks like a knockoff uh, Quidditch. Yeah, I like it. They couldn't get the IP, so we didn't get uh, Her Her Hermione. Correlation. Favor. Pure coincidence. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Is there like the youthful apprentice or something? Not. There's no correlation. <laughs> so next one teachings of the archaics. Uh, two and a blue. That's another lesson. Um, <laughs> just one thing that popped in my head is some of the actually like in paper magic. Whenever that becomes a thing, if Strixhaven is legal during then, um, for like standard, I can just picture somebody casting something that gets a lesson out of their sideboard, and they just like dead, sta dead stare at their opponent, dead in the eyes, like you're gonna learn today. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it'd be, it'd be really stupid, but hilarious, I think. Um, if an opponent has more cards in hand than you, draw two cards. Draw three cards instead if opponent has at least four more cards in their hand. In hand than you. Yeah. Not This one kind of seems like it might be play, but not at the same time. Like... It's, a it's a conditional divination. Yeah. So you're not even guaranteed to get the card draw. Your opponent has to have more cards than you. Mm -hmm. Um, the next one. 
it's mind control four mana for three cmc the notable thing is this can take planeswalkers um had three fairies still been legal this would have been a sweet effect oh yeah but uh i think this probably is bulker um the next one it's another land the biblio plex hope i said that right uh tap it add a colorless to tap look at the top card of your library if it's an instant source card you may reveal it and put it in your hand if you don't put that card into your hand that you may put it into your graveyard activate only if you have exactly zero or seven cards in hand uh, it's, no can we have it's can we remove the reserve list so you can have a library of alexandria no we have library of alexandria at home <laughs> Yeah, it's probably too niche to be reasonable. And standard and historic, I don't, I don't think it'll do great. Like, maybe in other formats. That's my impression yeah. of it. Um, next card is a dual card or double sided. So we have Torrent Sculptor, four mana two two with Ward two. So. Basically, counter unless your opponent pays two extra mana per spell that targets it. And then when it enters the battlefield, exile and center sorcery from your graveyard, and you put a number of 1 1 counters on Torrent equal to half that card's mana value. So that second part makes it a lot more reasonable against something like, like just being two toughness on its own. Plus, it's got pseudo kind of protection in itself. Uh, the backside. Two mana, discard a card, draw a card when you discard instant or sorcery. Um, so basically, burn damage equal to the CMC of the card you discard. Um, so this can do anywhere to from eight damage to no damage. Sorry, falling out of frame. Um, so kind of conditional. You're probably better off playing the dragons. Yeah, I agree. Um... These are interesting though, like just seeing the art on these ones, like this next one, uh, it's another is it card. Uh, it's a Jin and a F Freet, so um, Uvilda, 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 Dean of Perfection. Know. I don't know. I I'm chat knows with me and pronouncing things. <laughs> Not the greatest all the time. Whatever happened to just Craig, Dean of Perfection? <laughs> Bob, Dean of Expression. Dean of Expression. <laughs> um, a lot of text on these ones. Uh, it's a 2 2. Uh, tap, you may exile into a source of card from your hand. Put three hone counters on it. It gains up in your upkeep. If a card is exiled, remove a hone counter. And add when the last hone counter is removed from this. If it's exiled, you may cast it. It costs four less colorless, less to cast this way. That yeah, it seems like kind of slow. Suspend with discount. Yeah. Uh, the the Afrit side is three red, red, four, four. Begin your upkeep, exile the top card of each opponent's library till in a turn. Uh, you may cast spells from among those exiled cards, and you may spend mana as though or mana of any color to cast those spells. Every cast a spell from. Exile, put a plus counter on a free Dean of Expression. The, the backside is pretty interesting. The free seems like it's more usable. Yeah. You're still paying five men. Like, doesn't do anything the turn it comes down. But then it lets you start kind of getting that uh, Tybalt kind of card advantage off the top of your opponent's library. Yeah. Like, out of the two, though, I think I'd rather see the Nasiri than the Uvil Uvilda, if I were to play it. Yeah. Um, all right, we got a Golgari win. It's all you. Ooh. Okay. Um, ooh, it's one mana uh, for the black black creature. Uh, Valentin, Dean of the Vein, uh, Menace Lifelink, Vampire Warlock. Uh, if a non-token creature and opponent controls to die, exile instead. If you do, put... You may pay a two colorless. If you do, create a 1-1 one, one black and green 
pest creature token with when this creature dies you gain my life eh. it, See, it, i think this is actually pretty good it stops cat oven at least the turn. yeah but like the bad part is it it just it dies super easily um but like in order to kill it then they are gonna have to sacrifice like a cat or something um yeah. sacrifice something but uh the other side of it um Lisset, Dean of the Root, Human Druid, four four for four mana. When you gain life, you may put a one pay one colorless. If you do, put a plus a plus counter on each creature you control, and those creatures gain trampled on a turn. I think um, in the front, the front side, you also consider just playing it in historic and mono black vampires. It's another one drop. Yeah. With Swarin, you make it really big. It's already got the embedded life link. The menace is really reasonable. Mm hmm. Which can be really, really, really good, and I believe Soren gives Death Touch as well. Yeah. Um. So maybe it gets a home in there. Um. It's just the part of just a one-one. That's the part that really makes me kind of worried of it, of not being able to be pl be played. But I could be very wrong with that. Of just like that's my gut feeling on it. Um, I'm excited to see if it does do anything since it is Golgari. Um, but basically, just seeing the backside of it, it it feels more just a mono black card to me. Yeah. Moving on, we have Vanishing Verse. Uh, Orzov colors two mana, instant exile target mono colored permanent. This will be a great sideboard card in probably every eternal format. Vindicate Exile. comes to mind with this, but Vindicate is destroy any permanent, I think. Or non-land permanent. Yeah, it's three mana, I think, as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's super reasonable getting rid of Annex, uh, Bone Crusher Giant, basically pretty much any of the adventure cards, so. Yeah. Um What are things you can't? What uh you can get rid of ox for good. Um, I don't know if in Orzhov you'd be worried about exile creatures. Um, I think just in general, just the flexibility of the removal. Yeah. Well, next one we got is another three three creature. It's a uh, Boros Spirit Cleric. Um, Vigilance Trample. Whenever. Uh, Venerable War Singer deals combat damage to a player. You may return target creature card with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, where X is the amount of damage Venerable War Singer dealt to that player. So, Embercleave onto this and bring something big back? No, you bring two things back. Right? First strike and double strike? Yeah. Uh, I think this card's actually really good. Notably, it can get back Luris as well. Yeah. So that'd be pretty good. Like you just play Luris in in the sixty. Uh, I wouldn't. I would be wouldn't mind seeing something like that, like a Boros Agra deck playing this in Embercleave. Maybe just take uh, the old Scalds Boros deck, chuck this in there with Luris. Yeah, or even just curve out at three mana. Yeah. Then some Embercleaves have Luris in this be your top end. Maybe um, some Malls. Yeah, um, and it, I think no matter what, if you play Boros, you're probably gonna play Scalds now. Yeah, it, it just it's really good. You essentially get a second hand for two turns. Yeah, and even just pumping this up, Vigilance Trample. Mm -hmm. I know really the next mean. card people were talking about that for Salte Ultimatum. Search your library for four basics. Put one onto the battlefield. Taps your opponent's control. If we cost, so yeah, I guess it helps you get your other line drops, but you're probably just better off playing the other thing. Yeah, um, but the part of uh, if you pay four, put two of them onto the battlefield tapped under your control and the rest in your hand. Um, 
just being able to have land drops on cur uh, on curve consistently um like that's yeah, relevant think, too i think it just depends on how the decks progress so they've they're originally all in on the ramp line like turbo mm -hmm. and then they they shifted to deal with mono red being so prevalent um going with the shadows verdict main going the heavier removal so i mm -hmm. think it just depends on those flex spots on how they want to bridge the late game do they want to just try to race or do they want to be more interactive true um the next one the art's really pretty in this land yeah the lines have great art they do uh they all have like very similar art too like they have a little like i don't know what you would call it like some kind of swirl thing in it um but it's it's the simic show land yeah so then we have avatar of potential eldrazi um five mana four four whenever your opponent casts an instant or sorcery if they don't pay two mana you get to copy it um very good in edh for sure mm -hmm. may see like fringe play i could see it being kind of interesting um the back side is three mana each player looks at the top five cards of the library reveals the land instant or sorcery from among them puts it into their hand gains life so it's kind of modular effect I think if you're gonna play it, you're gonna play the front side. Yeah. My my thought kind of with the front front side, does that go into mono green stompy? With it being kind of a more op end creature based aggro deck. Like But what it, are you looking to copy out of that? It, I guess it really depends on the format if there's a lot of spells running around instant sorceries. So maybe it could be a sideboard card. And uh, if your opponent is playing a lot of instant sorceries, that uh, it, it, yeah, I guess it depends. Like it depends, like if it's if it's a lot of like burn based or control based. Um, because like if it's like a control matchup, you don't want that. Like, well, you get to copy their counter spell if their opponent pays two. Yeah, but you're they're gonna generally like against Stompy, I would imagine as a control player, I'm gonna be cutting down my counter spells and bringing in more things that play to the board. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll find the out. Last rare. Yeah. The last rare, it's a Golgari one. Okay. Uh Wither Bloom Command. This one I'm excited about. Um, just because Golgari is a command. It's a cool art on it too. Um you get to choose two. Target player mills three cards, then you return a land card from graveyard to your hand. Uh, destroy target non-creature, non-land permanent with, with mana value two or less. Uh, target creature gets minus three, minus one till on turn. Target opponent loses two life, you gain two life. I think it doesn't sound super exciting, but it could be relevant depending on the, the deck, obviously. Historic. This is going into the sideboard, I would guess, of Jund sack decks. Um, you mill to find your cats and your woe striders. You can destroy Graft Digger's Cage. You can destroy Rest in Peace. You can destroy any sort of hate outside of Ley Line. Mm -hmm. um, the, cre the kill creature potentially could come up. The life gain is probably not that relevant. Yeah. Um... In my mind for the one deck that it would go into or historic it went to uh jund but I'm not sure if that's the right deck for jund really or right card for jund unless there's a new jund that comes out i can do jund croxa like a jund mill like self mill with stitcher supplier and stuff yeah like filling your graveyard up just for your croxa is really good and then I think just, the biggest thing, it, it kills the, the graveyard hate. Yeah, thank you for coming by for the set review. Uh, thank you, Joe, for being on uh, chat. If you want to check out MTG Joe, uh, check out his YouTube content as well. It puts out a lot of good stuff. Um, Joe usually comes into my chat and kind of uh, talks me into the playing Blue Way Control, but hasn't happened yet. 
<laughs> it's funny for as much as I talk into blue light control, I hardly ever play it. <laughs> yeah, you're like, mostly like red, right? crazy. <laughs> yeah, but if you do enjoy, um, like I pretty much qualified for the MIQ the last year. Um, generally, I'll play those on the weekends when it comes in. Uh, towards the end of the month, we're always grinding for top 1200, finished 172 last month. Um, but yeah, play a mix. You like historic, my favorite format. So I jam a lot of that, but thank you, Jaffer, for having me on. Yeah. Thank you for coming by. I appreciate that.